This is Life Rewired, the Brain Injury Podcast, for survivors, by survivors. And now your host, Rob and Ashley. Hi, I'm Rob. And I'm Ashley. And this is Life Rewired. Hello, Ashley. Hi, Rob. We teased last podcast about Henry VIII, and we're going to get into that in just a moment. I wanted to share with the people at home and let's see if I can get this right. You should see my screen now. Can you see that? Yes. That is the Northern Lights that was uh, taken by a very good friend of ours, um, Blake Walker. He's been on the program before and I want you guys to, if you want to, um, you can send us in photos that you'd like us to share on the podcast and we will show those whenever we uh, do our shows. So it can be anything. It, it could be scenery. It could be something you're doing. That's a winning situation for you. Anything that you'd like to share as a viewer that you would think that would be great for our audience to see, send that in. I realize that won't be very, Helpful for the people listening on Spotify, but we will describe it in great detail. <laughs> That's a good idea because they always talk about imagery as like a stress reduction tool. And yeah. Having a brain injury or being in recovery from a brain injury at times can be very stressful. So. Right. Glad to help out the community. So thank you for that photo, Blake. And I think this is Angel's graceful ex. <laughs> Goodbye, Angel. I'm glad okay. she lasted as long as she did <laughs> for attention span. <laughs> we'll get her like a minute this time. Hey, that's, that's pretty good for Angel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yes. Um, also, another little thing before we get it, jump into today's questions and our topic, I should say. Um, I put out feelers in some of the support groups that we're in. And I've asked, what are some topics that people are not talking about that you would like to hear us talk about maybe we can get some experts in here or or what have you that way we can address situations that are not just being swept under the rug and i've got some really great responses from some people also if you're viewing this or listening to us on spotify or amazon or any of the other platforms that's we're, that we're on drop us a line the email is life rewired podcast at yahoo.com it'll also be on your screen and in the description and uh, just let us know um, any kind of topics that that you would like us to cover that are not being addressed sounds good so without further ado i'm going to throw it over to ashley because today ashley we are talking about something that we discussed in our very first podcast Yes. So back in the podcast infancy stages, our first podcast was on famous people with traumatic brain injuries. And one of the people we touched on briefly that deserved a full episode eventually, which is now, is King Henry Tudor um, VIII, of course, um, of England. So we are going to be traveling back to the 1500s to talk about Henry VIII. Now, Rob, um, this is going to be you putting your uh, little detective cap on and everybody at home or wherever you are watching, putting their detective caps on because the question I want you to be able to answer by the end of this was, could brain injury explain Henry VIII's tyrannical behavior? Um, the two references used for this podcast are uh, an article by Amelia Lay. Bula Cheppi, I apologize if I'm butchering your name, and a book by Frederick Chamberlain called The Private Character of Henry VIII. So, without further ado, let's uh, see what evidence I can present to either persuade or dissuade you from thinking, did a TBI cause Henry VIII to go from king to tyrant? Awesome. So in a few words, before we start, who, who exactly was Henry VIII? Prior to his brain injury, King Henry VIII of England was described as 
by historians as a scholar, an athlete. He was very thoughtful and wise, and he was also considered to be a very considerate king. However, from the ages of 29 to 45, he experienced recurrent head traumas from various sporting activities that kind of shifted his personality over time. Mm -hmm. So we can see if we look at that, we have a little check boxes that we can mark off from today's standards. Sounds like he could have even had a, some CTE going on, possibly. Well, let's uh, see what we have here. All right, go for it. Okay. So the first sports injury we are going to talk about was back in 1520. Um, he sustained a concussion while wrestling the French king. His head was actually slammed um, during the wrestling match. And Henry, being a young egotistical king back then you know kind of really played it off as everything was fine plus there's an audience of people so don't really want to embarrass yourself so he actually continued with the mash but that is the first identified head injury is from that tournament with the king of france and playing it off sounds kind of like he was a man <laughs> <laughs> da -da -da -bing. um the second one was in March of 1524, so a couple years later. Um, if you've ever seen the show The Tudors um, on Showtime that aired back in the early 2000s, they actually covered this in one of the scenes. While jousting, Henry actually forgot to close his visor because back then when you jousted on horses, you had to wear the metal ham helmets and they had the visor that would come over the face to protect your face. Um, because in jousting, they use poles. And the goal is to knock the opponent off their horse using the pole. So he forgot to close his visor and his opponent's lance. So not a pole, but lance, my bad, struck him in the face. Mm. So that was the second injury because it... And knocked him off the horse. Yeah. Um, the third injury was in 1525 while pole vaulting. His pole gave out and he actually fell um, into a water ditch and he lost consciousness and had to be pulled from the water. So that's actually the first one where he lost consciousness. Now remember with traumatic brain injuries, it doesn't mean you have to lose consciousness in order right. to be diagnosed with one. I didn't lose consciousness. Rob, did you? I don't remember. Briefly. Okay. Okay. Yep. So you'll see a, a wide variety between people with uh, traumatic brain injuries on whether or not they lost consciousness. But one of the biggest myths is that you have to lose consciousness, which right. clearly you don't. The last one was in 1536, which is considered the worst injury he sustained because while he was jousting he was knocked off his horse and he was unconscious for two hours the doctors actually mm. thought he wasn't going to wake up and he was going to pass away and um when anne boleyn who was his wife at the time the second queen of england heard about this um it caused her uh, great distress and they actually say it was one of the contributing factors to her shortly miscarrying um, her, uh, what would have been her second child after Elizabeth the first. Um, so that is also shown in the Tudors, which we'll reference that down below too. Um, you can find clips of, it, uh, the show online, but you have to, I think, purchase on YouTube in order to actually well, we, watch it. We can, can actually reference it. Uh, and actually let's, let's show the, the audience a clip of what we're, what, what you're talking about. So okay. uh, here, here's a clip from the tutors. The king's got his right on. Oh, 
Wow, that was pretty fascinating. Ashley, describe what we just saw. That was the reference to the second injury while jousting when he forgot to close his visor and he got lanced in the face. Yeah, and we, as you just discussed, that was uh, the second Correct. known, yeah, second known TBI he possibly sustained. Correct. Yeah. So yeah, there's a, there's so many different um, indicators throughout his life. How I many multiple uh, concussions and TBIs did he face? That even that's not even documented. Yeah, these are the four that have gone down in history, especially since there are a lot of witness accounts, because these were spectacles and forms of entertainment back in the day. We have TV yeah. um, and, you know, the Internet and social media nowadays. But back then, I mean, they had activities and books and public, you know, tournaments like this where people would watch royalty do jousts and pole vaulting and wrestling. Right. Yes, that was the one where he lost consciousness for two hours and the doctors were actually preparing for him to pass away from this because that's a long time back then to uh, be unconscious. Right. It was a very worrisome time for everybody. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine being unconscious for two hours now? Not that's unless you're like... having surgery and they put you to sleep. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just from a from a head injury being unconscious for that long usually it's minutes or mm -hmm. you know but for that period of time and for him to recover that's just a, a miracle in, its, in and of itself well that's an interesting thing that you said the word recovery because um some people would argue that he actually has not recovered as a result of this last um injury um there have been historical reports of loss of impulse control, amnesia, um, some even say sociopathy. And what do I mean by sociopathy? Well, he executed 57,000 enemies after this, the most out of any English monarch in history. He wow. also had two of his wives, Anne Boleyn, who was the wife during the last incident, and Catherine mm -hmm. Howard, who was the fifth of his six wives, um, beheaded uh, for adultery. And many insist that at least Anne was innocent of the charges and he just wanted to get rid of her. Um, while Catherine, there was some merit that uh, she was cheating, but there were other options, you know, other than um, beheading a woman back then. Um, he also treated his daughters, Mary I, who was uh, his first wife, Catherine of Aragon's daughter, also known as Bloody Mary, as well as Anne Boleyn's daughter, Elizabeth I, the longest reigning English monarch, uh, who was also a woman, pretty badly. He also suffered from depression, headaches, insomnia, and probably low testosterone. Hmm. Yep, I would say he checks off every single box of a injury survivor. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine if they had effects her back then? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. I, I, I'm afraid if they had effects her back then, it would have been a whole new historical uh, narrative. Right. Who knows? We may not have had Queen Elizabeth II. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Never know. Um, because interestingly, it was during the joust when the with the pole vaulting when the king's great matter came up that's when uh he was trying to get his marriage from Catherine of Aragon annulled because he was insistent on trying to get a male heir and was convinced that she would not be able to give him one mm -hmm. and uh the pope declined the annulment and he was then forced to um separate from the pope and Roman Catholicism and started the Church of England so he could marry Anne Boleyn and change the course of history. So Elizabeth I was a product of uh, him and Anne Boleyn's marriage. And, uh, you know, Anne Boleyn was definitely the catalyst for changing history by yeah. giving us such a great uh, English monarch. She, uh, Elizabeth I's uh, reign was considered 
you know, a golden rule for a reason. Um, but anyway, back on topic, um, this is going to um, historian Frederick Chamberlain's book, The Private Character of Henry VIII that I mentioned earlier. Um, it's his theory that TBI, traumatic brain injury, had caused diffuse axonal injury, which leads to changes in the brain his behavior is consistent with traumatic brain injury resulting from multiple blows to the head. And we discussed the four that are mm -hmm. historically documented. There could have been more, but it, there's at least four. Yeah. And more specifically, this diffuse axonal injury is actually considered a type of brain injury. So his argument is that yes, Henry VIII has traumatic brain injury. 